Um, yeah, so the Oracle database, obviously long running uh, enterprise app. Uh, in fact, uh, 10 plus years of support is fairly common. So there are likely Oracle databases out there right now that create predate system D. Um, so they're around a long time. Um, obviously there are C group V1 distros. Uh, there are distros that have switched over to V2 now. Um, many of the enter enterprise distros are still on V1. We're trying to get to V2, but we need this database app to be able to run on both. Um, easier said than done at times. So this is a discussion. Uh, we brought this up two years ago at LPC Lisbon. More of a what if, um, is anybody else doing this? Is anybody else interested in this? Um, definitely it was more of a, an, an idea at that time, not a lot of substance behind it. Uh, in the last two years, we've got a little bit of substance. Uh, with that said, we have a fair number of questions and discussion points um, from what we found. Uh, so first, um, kind of a summary of, of definitions. Uh, so we, what we've called as layer zero is the, the SysFS Excel itself. Um, so literally, if you're going to uh, fiddle with CPU.shares, for example, um, obviously the user has to have a, a ton of knowledge on such a system like that. They need to know the C, the C group SysFS itself, uh, whether it's a V1, V2 box, um, they have to manage all the system D delegation, as well as knowing like how powerful the system is, you know, how many CPUs are there, what other workloads are going on. Um, basically, this user is full out knowledgeable of the whole box. Uh, at layer one, then we have um, the traditional lib C group stuff that was made circa 2008. Um, so CG get, CG, CG set. Uh, unfortunately, that doesn't hide a lot of details. You no longer have to know the SysFS details, but everything else you still need to know. What we started on recently, and in fact, we sent out um, an RFC for this uh, this summer, um, is what we've called CGX get and CGX set. Um, this is abstracted away the v, V1 versus V2 logic. So if you're on a V1 system, um, CPU.shares, whatever, you can you can talk with that. Uh, you can also talk CPU.wait. Uh, this layer will make sense of that, translate it, figure it out, and then write and discuss and talk to the file system uh, with the right uh, the, the right version. Um, again, this is out for RFC. Finally, the layer we really, really want to get to, uh, we're calling layer three. Um, and this would be a layer that could handle the system de-delegation, uh, could, could minimize the requirements of the, of the user. And so the user would just say, I want 10% of the system, or I want a C group that, um, even being outside of the box, I want a C group where um, I, it won't get killed if we if we run out of memory. Um, so set up OOMD or whatever or whatever whatever uh, you're using to manage your C groups. Tell it that this one's important and that it shouldn't be killed, or vice versa. Tell it that this one's unimportant because it's doing yum updates or whatever. So that's the background of our definitions. Um, so like I said, current status. Uh, right now we have no plans on changing layer zero. Obviously, changing the kernel um, would be detrimental to anyone. Um, I don't foresee us ever needing to make those changes. Uh, layer one, uh, in May, we added full C group V2 support. So CG get, CG set, all the, all the standard lib C group tools uh, support uh, C group V2. Um, layer two, we have an RFP out. Um, I have a link there. Um, and that seems to be working fairly well. Obviously, it's, we're using it in-house um, in some internal testing. Uh, I don't know of a lot of usage outside of Oracle. Again, that's not even committed, so I doubt too many people are using that. And then finally, where we really, really want to get to is this layer three. Um, and let me share what are the discussion points. Um, so here, here's some of the topics I'd love to love to hear people's thoughts on right now. Um, the C bindings for libc group were written, again, 2008, 2009. Uh, they expose a lot of the gory details of the internal library. Um, ideally, I'd love to get to a different area, uh, have different bindings there. Um, We've added, added a lot of automated tests along, around libc group and we're using Python quite a bit. Um, in the database, we don't use Python, but Python for our tests would be helpful. I was wondering if other languages are of interest. Um, I'd love to talk about the layer two proposal, what we've put out there, um, get people's thoughts. And then finally, probably where I'd really like to spend the meat of the time if we can is discussing layer three. Um, so like I said, um, what, what, is an, what APIs of interest to people? What are they looking for? Um, how do we make this as user friendly as possible? Because um, C groups are cool, C groups are powerful. They're they're a great kernel tool. My database team really, I don't necessarily want them digging down into the bowels of the kernel. Um, and since in some ways, right now, the the user facing API requires that. Um, 
On top of that, then, if it, I, we're, the goal would be to hide system D, system D knowledge uh, so we can delegate if we need to. I don't believe any Oracle databases that are pre-system D will need these changes. I think they will go out of life before this comes into effect. Uh, and then finally, things like PSI and, and UMD, what Facebook has done. Um, if, we could, if we could make these C groups a little bit smarter and say, hey, I want this C group to be, um, to be labeled as important and not get killed when I run out of memory. Or I want this C group, if, if we run into CPU contention, let's emphasize this C group or, or whatever, the, whatever database ends up wanting. Um, so yeah, that's my background. Um, thoughts, questions? Uh, well, you realistically need system D integration, right? So that's one of oh, the yes. major problems that we we ex we experience. Uh, I'm probably summarizing right. things that most of you already know about. One of the main challenges that we have right now is that with um, so older versions of LXC, it's not as big as a use case for LXC itself, but for LXC, for example, we allowed users to spawn fully unprivileged containers directly from the shell. And obviously uh, for the in a standard setup, you want to use a delic dedicated C group for your container. The problem is that on any recent C group v2 only system, you cannot do this if you don't wrap around uh, system D run and related tools uh, that give you a delegated C group and the API that we currently have for um, getting an empty delegated C group that you need uh, uh, is, is, is really not nice. You need to do very complex D-bus, D-bus calls, which I think is really overkill. So one of the things uh, we would need, for example, for runtimes, which I think would be necessary, is essentially one single uh, library call, either be it in a libc group library or in a system D exposed library that essentially allows us to say, give me a delegated C group that is writable for my user so that I can move myself into this one and then create sub C groups uh, and so on. Um, this is really something that's um, that's missing. But I guess you're more interested in an abstraction of asking for, uh, for example, how much memory do I have available and not care about whether it's C group V1 or C group 2. Correct. Although to answer your, to answer your comment, um, we will have that same problem, obviously. We need to make a delegated C group. So. I don't want the database to have that knowledge, but we're going to face the same problems you faced in LXC. So, yeah, let me let me reach out to the system D team. Um, that's been on our to do list to to work with them and try to get more closer interaction there. Yeah, I think this is uh, it, it's definitely needed. Um, we have. I think we have duplicated between a lot of uh, runtimes and a lot of user space programs that do low level uh, C group interactions. We have duplicated or need Correct. to duplicate the same logic. Legacy layout, hybrid layout, so empty unified C group hierarchy mounted at SysFS C group unified. Yep. The other into separate controllers, and then we have pure C group uh, uh, V2 layouts. Right. And uh, depending on the layout, you need to perform different delegation steps and so on. So having this encompassed in a single library would would help us as well. So far, it hasn't led to anything. <laughs> uh, agreed. Yeah. Two, two years ago, it was vaporware at that. It wasn't even vaporware. It was just straight up a wish list. Um, I now have a handful of database teams on board that we're working with. So I think we're getting more realistic. Um, but I, I mean, we, we, face, we face the same problems. It's also more pressing, right? Given that we now have distros that uh, one more distros running uh, on C group V2 uh, only layouts. Correct. And in fact, for Oracle Linux, we're strongly discussing switching to V2 for our next release. So mm -hmm. it's it's imminent even now for the enterprise world. Um, obviously, it was some of the more cutting edge distros that switched earlier, but no, all of us are getting there. Um, there's there's also the issue of how do you want the level three information? Um, you know, there is in proc mem info a field, I believe it's mem, mem avail, that tells you how much memory avail. It doesn't currently take the C group stuff into account, which is arguably a bug. But the question is, do, does the kernel do this and go through all the kernel abstractions and say, this is what you've got um, for this thing? Or do you do, do, do it with a complicated library, which, which you have to keep in sync with um, all the kernel changes? 
That's a good question. In fact, that mem info um, that came up with the the uh, rack, which is one of the Docker team or one, excuse me, one of the database teams here in Oracle, literally just a handful of months ago with us. And yeah, that was biting them pretty hard because they were like, it's telling me mem avail is the entire box, um, which obviously is not correct when you're in a container. Um, ideally, solving as much of this in the kernel as possible would be good because uh, our library can be smart, but every time we add smarts, that's just another pitfall that we've got to jump and fix and keep alive. Um, but yeah, that would be a good one I'd love to fix in the kernel. Yeah, um, you know, we had some conversations with uh, with the folks who maintained the mem available, that, that, that part of the kernel earlier, and they, they were, they didn't um, shoot down adding C group knowledge to to, to memavail, um, but they they said it was one of those that they'd have to see it to see um, how 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 it works. But sure. um, yeah, I but you know, so see. yeah, I, I just meant so it's a possible direction yeah. to pursue. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I think we what we need is just to gather the sufficient support and then uh, make a case that this is a use case that people actually have. I definitely can see the value in uh, in having something like this. Um, I think what there was a proposal even a few years back from people from SiteGround, and they did the hardcore version of this of what we just discussed, and essentially retroactively namespaced uh, mem info directly so you would have a mount option i think on proc so that it would show you uh, c group virtualized information and this also applied to cpu info and a bunch of other stuff but back then it was shut down with the argument that it's not the kernel's job to do that <laughs> what are your gut feelings do you think we could revisit that now given containers are more prevalent or? I mean, we have already seen on list with, with some patch sets that uh, people start to be more open about it than they used okay. to. So when but, should heal yeah. You know, but we don't want to change the interfaces that yeah. say, this is what the machine has. We need to yeah, add yeah, the interfaces okay. that says, this is what your process has. This is what your right. process perspective has. Yeah, um, I'm, ju I'm just saying this was back in the, back, uh, back in the days, this was one of the first approaches. Yeah, but yes. So one question is related is like how currently is being used, uh, the mem available is being useful. So the, the reason I'm asking is like uh, from the MF memory management's perspective, until we try to reclaim or uh, we, we don't really know if uh, we were able to reclaim or how much memory do we have, unless we also proactively reclaiming and know exactly how much, like proactively keeping uh, some free me memory to make it uh, schedulable, let's say. So coming back to uh, mem available, how are uh, people currently using it? Because uh, it's kind of a big uh, like number out there, but uh, I'm not sure that it's really that helpful. So I can answer at least for the database team I worked with, they literally were putting it in a report um, and it was running within a container and the container had four gigabytes, don't know, the machine had 256, making up numbers. Um, and then thus the report looked wrong. No one was actually actively using it in that case, but the report was misleading. And that's kind of the big challenge, unless you have the people who are actually using it with you or, or, or trying to get that information and use it in some way, you don't have have the information need to design a useful um, user space interface. Agreed. Uh, so from, uh, I have a, a question or, or more for like at a layer two uh, related mm -hmm. work is uh, so one of the challenging we are having uh, is uh, the power users or like I think uh, I, I'm not sure is, uh, if the Oracle's database apps uh, does many like sub containers manage those or stuff. Like for example, we have many uh, power users. One, let's say one example is the, let's say, uh, the build service, build and test service. Any all like on demand, it creates contain sub containers to run the uh, builds or the tests and stuff, and then recycle them or sure. delete them and stuff. 
So I'm just wondering how you are abstracting uh, this whole subcontainer management uh, for these power users uh, on the V1 versus on the V2. Sure. Um, yeah, no, good question. Uh, as of right now, <clears throat> excuse me, the database is, is not doing subcontainers. Uh, in, in fact, the containerization of the database is a fairly in, new to them, um, obviously not new to Linux, but new to them. So this has been an ongoing process for the last handful of years to, to figure out how to containerize them well. I don't see them at the moment going to subcontainerization, um, but that could change. As far as the, the CG get, CGX get, um, dealing with subcontainers, in theory, it should just work. With that said, I haven't tried significantly. I've been doing, uh, so our automated tests are using LXC. Um, we are not going down into multiple layers of containers though in the automated tests. I'm not even certain if I could get that up and running happily on GitHub Actions, but um, I would definitely try. On the other hand though, it should in theory just work. There, it doesn't have a lot of knowledge. So if your SysFSC group, is mounted properly within your container. I would have no. I would think it should just work. We Maybe do. We do nesting no problem even on Git. So we run tests. Uh, we have a large test suite that does this, doing nested containers, running Docker and Lexd containers, okay. um, running Lexd within Lexd, and yeah, it's really not an issue. You essentially need to just take care uh, to mount C groups correctly within your container or in a format that the uh, init system that you, if you're spawning an init system in your container that the init system can recognize and then it's all good. Then you can nest, system D nests fine as well nowadays. So it's really not an issue anymore. It becomes a bit of a more, a bit of a more of an issue when you have stuff like uh, C group V2 mounted on the host. I think we had to have covered this a couple of years ago already. And you have a rather old systemd version running inside of a container, which doesn't know how to deal with C group V2. And because of how C group works, you cannot mount C group V1 controllers both in uh, in a V1 and a V2 hierarchy. It can only be present in one hierarchy. So you might fall on your face if you have a scenario like this. But even then, it, I think for most systemd versions, you should be fine as long as you can create named C groups and you have pre-mounted, for example, a name equal systemd C group somewhere on the host and make it available to the nested container or the container in general, then it should work. That's one thing that's bitten us in the enterprise world since, again, we maintain distros that yeah. last a long time. Um, we have a there's a there's a couple of our older um, kernel versions or distro versions that have a, a system D that's really really weak with the v1 two v1 versus v2 um, and I've seen exactly what you're talking about but those are fading out slowly. The problem the problems we thought we once thought this was going to be a, a really big problem but yes I. I maybe we can get lucky and it won't become uh, as much of a problem as it is. Yeah. yeah. So one uh, kind of like related here. Uh, so system D like, uh, I'm like, we, we don't run the system D, so irrespective of the system D, I'm more uh, kind of uh, like many power users accessing directly the APIs and let's say we mount the, the C group uh, like uh, correctly in their, uh, in their, like their, it's visible the V1 and V2. I'm just wondering how uh, is this expectation is like, as we are migrating from V1 to V2, uh, these apps need to be changed, uh, uh, like how they are creating the subcontainers, instead of uh, like this, uh, let's see, uh, like a C group is going to be transparently changing the underlying using V1 or the V2 for, for the subcontainers. So, so mainly my question is like, are uh, here, uh, like let's say we are let's, uh, moving from V1 to V2, do we aim for more or transparent uh, to the these such kind of power users migration or do we expect them or they have to change something the way they enter the C group or they, the way they creating, used to create uh, subcontainers for memory separately, for CPU separately, but now it's a unified and 
had some other restrictions stuff? No, that's a good question. Um, and in fact, we have a similar scenario with the database. Some database teams want to be very C groups hand on, hands on, and some want to be more just give give me give me some memory or give me this and and you you figure it out. Um, and that's why thus we have the multiple layers. The, the more hands on ones, I'm hoping can deal more with the oh thanks Mike um the layer two level so they can call CGX get. And if they want to speak CPU shares the whole time, that's fine. We'll translate for them. If they want to speak CPU weight or whatever, that's fine. We can handle it. Or memory.max, pick your favorite. Um, that will give them the advantage of they don't know have to know v1, v2, but they still have all the power and all the super, like you said, they're, they're still a power user. For the non-power users, um, my goal is to get them more to the layer three of just give me this 10% number or whatever. And, and you go look and see what else is going on in the box. And you set up system D for me. And I, I don't, then I don't have to think about these things. Um, so I think in your case, I would guess a lot more of your users would be more on the layer two side from what you've said. Mm -hmm. So, oh, okay. So going to the your layer three, uh, I'm kind of more interested in the memory uh, control like uh, part. Yeah. So one thing like, again, <laughs> challenge for us from V1 to V2 is the, the way the swap account, like the whole swap account, uh, accounting uh, like behavior has changed. So yeah. I'm just wondering how, uh, what's the high level we are, say uh, here, okay, give me uh, some memory or uh, I'm not sure like what's the right uh, statements to say here is, which will kind of uh, transparently, transparently able to enforce on the V1 and the V2. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you, you're asking some of the questions that we've struggled with. Cause like you said, it's not a one-to-one -one mapping from V1 to V2, especially in cases like that. No, so, no. so I think we will do a best effort. And as of right now, since the database is the team driving this, I'm going to largely do what they prefer. With that said, we have a wide audience here and I'd love to get other people's inputs cause it's definitely be a compromise. Um, and hopefully it's a compromise that the community could be happy with and not just the database. But I don't have a graceful, I don't know, Kristen, do you have a graceful answer? I don't have a graceful answer on some of these. Uh, a graceful answer being how do we want to set values, for example, in, uh, in the future? And I, I, I think the API should be abstracted. I'm probably telling, think, telling you things that you already know. I think oh, sure. the API should be abstracted uh, quite, uh, quite properly, right? Uh, ideally, the applications shouldn't know what uh, uh, shouldn't know the difference between C group v1 and C group v2 they should just have a way of Agreed. setting I want this much memory and so on and probably and right. as exactly as you said one of the main challenges will be um, I mean what do we expose right one of the things that we could say is we only expose stuff that is available in C group v2 and nothing from v1 so if you want to do memory swap accounting which is really complicated and doesn't so, I'm not trying to insult anyone, but the memory swap handling in C group V1 is, just really doesn't work. Um, uh, and it's, it's really hard to use. It's really difficult to calculate the correct values. We've done all of this dance in, in like CFS it's, it, it itself to abstract this away. It's really not pretty. And in, it isn't available in C group V2 as far as I know, and there is no plan to do this in C group V2. So probably we shouldn't even expose it uh, anymore in a, in, in a new API. Um, it just adds complexity and it's something that we can't nicely support, I think, but yeah. That, that one's a tough, that's a good example. That one's tough for us because one database team is heavily using the swap accounting. Yeah. Um, so balancing that will be hard for us, but yeah, I, I agree with you. I mean, it, you, you could probably expose it as a, uh, uh, as an API that is agnostic towards C group V2 and C group V1. And if you are on C group uh, V2 only and you don't have a little bit available then the function would fail with, I don't know, EOP not supported. Yeah, yeah, agreed. Right, Shaquille, there is no plan to make uh, uh, this swap accounting stuff available in, in, uh, in C group V2, I take it. Makes sense, yeah. yeah. Okay, um, I think with that, we're uh, nearing towards the end, right?